Welcome to my platform. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your location. And if you like what I do here, please, after watching, subscribe, put on your notification bell, set it to all notifications so that you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. In this platform, we react to all forms of video, what we do before putting the video, analyze it, and we sit down there to watch it together with you. Then later, we'll come to the comment section to talk about it. Of course, everybody is entitled to his or her opinion, but let us always do it constructively in the comment section. The margins of Senator Ayu. Uh, well, uh, if you know the history of PDP, show, you will know that um, PDP in, was initiated by a group called the G39, G9. They are the original founding fathers of PDP. And Senator Yocha Ayu is one of those people. So he embodies what PDP is about. He embodies the reason why someone like myself, a young man, uh, came back to Nigeria from the UK after getting my law degree and felt that the PDP was a party that I needed to be part of. So if you remember, I sort of not thoughts about uh, running for the Office of National Publicity Secretary during this last convention, but because of the zoning, it was zoned to the southwest. And in the larger interests of Nigeria, I remain in the party and I still stand with the party's decision. I, I see this NWC as composed as the future Nigeria deserves. Senator Yota, are you? I have never met him before, but I have heard of him. I am confident that PDP has the kind of leadership. And if you, kind of leadership it, it needs. And if you remember, she won this same venue, this same show. I assured you, when you put the question to me, that was the PDP ready to get out of the problems that we sort of encountered a couple of weeks ago. And I told you that, Sheung, PDP is built with a lot of shock absorbers as Folocom, if you want to use the right uh, balance. <laughs> <in> our, <laughs> Folocom. our Folocom is solid. You can, see, you can see our convention. There was really no contest at the convention. There was more of consensus. People... It, it, it sort of flowed from the spirit of Nigeria that, listen, just get your act together. So when I fly through the airports, anywhere I go, I just got back from Lagos from the convergence that Yaga had 3.0. So everywhere I went, from the hotel lobby guys to people say, PDP, please, just come back. We need you people to come and, come and take back Nigeria. Come and rescue us. Everybody's asking for PDP. They don't even understand where we, where we are today. She, as of 2014, there was a list that came out that had the 10 most profitable places to invest or countries to invest in Africa. Nigeria was sitting at number two, just right behind South Africa. That same list came out a few months ago. Nigeria is not even on the first 20. It's not even on the front page anymore. So we have lost our place of reckoning as a country. And... I think it's, it's because we have an inexperienced set of people running a political party that does not even function as a political party that are the helm of our affairs, who seem to be unable to coordinate themselves to take this country mm. where it's ought to be with the kind of resources that, that we say have that, as a country. If you say that, I mean, it's actually debatable from the point of view of those to whom you are referring to the APC. Well, they will tell you that the PDP led Nigeria into the rut of 14, uh, 16 years, and that's what they are trying to fix. Shem, data that that's doesn't a rot, lie. That that's a rot, just a moment. That that's the rot that's led the country to this point. And that's, that's the conversation that the APC will give you. So uh, um, one thing I have become very certain of in, in, in life is the consistency of data. It doesn't lie. Our GDP at the time when these guys took over, our, our, our debt profile when they took over, our mortality rates, our happiness rating in the world, our poverty index, as it, as it were, from 2014 to date. So the data is not lying. The data is all showing that we've, we've gone 25 years back. So out of 2014, 2015, our debt stock was about, let's say, nine, between 9 and 11 trillion. Today, it's almost 30 something trillion, 38, as at the last time I checked. And you think that one should remain as a, as a, as, as a, a citizen of this country and be happy. So, within the last six weeks, do you know what has happened to Nigeria on the international scene? 
We've been put on a red list. We had no business being on. And the kind of response from even our red, foreign office... Red, red list because of, of, of COVID-19. Yes. So, and I, I'll tell you something. When China, when, when COVID, when the first SARS virus was discovered to have emanated from China, they didn't suffer the kind of repercussions we suffered with this red list, putting us on the red list. I feel that we should have come up with a very... I'm hearing that they're planning to retaliate. Right now, we do not even have a direct flight from Dubai to UAE to Nigeria. We already have issues there. And think, you know, the thing that amazes me about this government is that they don't even think about the implications of their actions on businesses. Twitter is still suspended in Nigeria. This was a means that Nigerians who had, the governments had failed in the last six months, six years, had failed them totally, had seen an alternative with Twitter to raise income. The Nigerian government banned Twitter because of So slide. invariably, you're saying that your party seems to have found its voice and perhaps fixed itself and ready to help Nigeria. Is that what you're saying? So, uh, PDP has its poised as a party in government in waiting. There's nothing that can be said. Nigerians are just waiting for, in fact, all we're waiting for and, and hoping, like you said, that the president will sign. In fact, we've started seeing tricks of them saying he refused to accent to the Electoral Act Amendment, which we know he hasn't. And we know that we're hoping that he will sign so that we can have an election where Nigerians clearly give APC the red card. They need to, they got it in 2019 as far as I'm concerned, but let us even just emphasize it in 2023. Let us be clear to everybody that. Thank you very much. You have come. We have seen. When you came, we had dollar at 190. Right now, dollar is at 540. The pound was at 250. Today, it's 710, which is, I, I cannot even understand how, so, how a government could be so careless as to lead the country into where it is today. Insecurity. You cannot even, you know, I keep saying this, thing, and I think I've gotten the right word for it. The, the mental state of Nigerians when they travel the Kaduna Abuja Expressway. And we're going to have a lot of mental uh, issues. So we need to be prepared for the future because this government has created a lot of, a lot of health issues right. that Nigerians will face in the future because of the carelessness let me, let me, of let how me, it has handled yeah. its, its affairs. So you've been talking about your, your neighbors, the APC. <laughs> let me allow Ali Abdullah, who has since joined us. Ali Abdullah uh, is a chieftain of the APC and a lawyer. Thank you so much, Ali, for joining us. It's good to, to see you again. Thank let you, me start by asking, you heard what Senator Yucha you said, that the APC should start preparing the hand over notes. And uh, they've somewhat shown you, uh, because I wouldn't say it's a red card, somewhat like a yellow card, because uh, this game of this half is not over until 2023. Um, first and foremost, let me get your view on what Senator Yocha you said. Oh, all right. Uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, I read what he said in the uh, meeting or convention. Or I don't even know what is it, but uh, you see the, the irony of the entire thing of what uh, the chairman of PDP said is, is actually not lost on some of us. And even it shouldn't be lost on Nigerians. If you are someone who is following the happenings of thing, on, on things in this country, you know very well the antecedents of everyone in this game. Senator Ayu is among the people today in this country who has actually helped in plunging this country to where we are in the very aspect of the insecurity that everyone is crying today. It's on record that he is one of the recipients of the Dasuki's get money, a $2.5 billion that was actually meant for the purchase and procurement of arms to prosecute the war on insurgency you, and order. You, you have evidence to that? Yes. You he has actually to confessed to that. <laughs> that True. Yes. That? It's, you can check it right here. I can actually show you on my phone. He confessed to that. Uh, he that said one? he collected the oh, sum I mean. of 345 million from Dasuki, who is, who, who, who is, who was the national security advisor then, actually. 
and the Suki was standing trial and still standing trial over that issue of the money that was actually meant to purchase arms, mm -hmm. which was actually squandered, frittered away by PDP, by the then government of because former President Jonathan. I mean, interestingly, you are a lawyer. Yes. And you know the implication of speaking, uh, talking about people and talking about exactly. figures. I, I and it's, it's not of sensation. Uh, not I stand by what I said. This is something that he, he himself has confessed. <laughs> he said he collected this money to actually offer uh, you, consultancy. You heard him say that? You heard of course. Him? Of course. You can just Google it now and check it. He confessed to, 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 to checking it. He said he offered services as a consultant to politics, that he has some special skills when it comes to politics and politicking in this country. And it is in that vein or on that basis that he collected a sum of 345 million that was meant to actually prosecute the war on insecurity in this country from Samba Dosuki, who was then the National Security Advisor. I don't know when but, but the matter is Samba Dosuki... Though, so uh, I, I'm not very so, looking to uh, th uh, that conversation, so I wouldn't want it's, to... It's a public knowledge, what... and he has, he has actually mm. confessed to that. It would be good so that if, is not... if, if that is substantiated. It I don't is have beyond reasonable doubt. But, and you see, but so the, let question, me the question is, yes. is your party threatened about a statement oh made by God. the new chairman of the of the PDP I, I, I don't, I don't think that so. you and guys should why. start preparing your, your hand over notes. I don't think so, and this is why. And you see, of, of course, sometimes it's only natural and normal for people to forget where they're coming from. And we are here, some of us, who will not be tired of reminding Nigerians where we were coming from, and even the reasons some of the reasons, largely, why we found ourselves where we are today here. And it's largely due to the actions of PDP. There is no any single doubt about this. 16 years, this country failed to invest in development. This is the reason why we are witnessing what we are witnessing today, Sheun. Let's face it, people just don't start, just don't jump up to go into criminality. Why are we where we are today? It's a development question. Much as it is a security concern, but it's at the, at the root of it, it's a development question. And if we don't tell ourselves the truth as Nigerians, to find the actual root cause so that we can work towards solutions, we will never be able to find the cure of what we are facing today. Mm. So but let so, me tell you. So, so Ali, um, is your party as marketable today as it was in 2014? See, it is, and it's a, it's a different ty type type of marketing that will happen. Are you afraid that the PDP will give you a run for your money in 2023? Afraid, not the right word. If, are you worried? I, I are you concerned? My, I will speak for my own self. Are you concerned? I think that you only, have a tough time in 2020. I think it's only natural. One shouldn't actually, you shouldn't even discard, to be honest, you know me by now, Sean, a lot well. Just like he, uh, Tony Ahilebo, knows me, I, I speak the truth and I will tell you how it is. See, oh. it will be foolhardy for anyone to say they would not be concerned about an opponent in any uh, race. Whether be it game, be it politics, you you will. Thank you so much for watching this video together with me. Like I said before, if it is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel and you like what I do, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, share this video, leave your comment in the comment section. You are free to criticize, but let us do it always constructively. Remain blessed. I appreciate your massive support and I love and cherish each and every one of you. Until I meet you again in my next video, for now we say bye-bye.